This video is a joint production of HVACRschool.com, the HVAC School Podcast, and TrueTechTools.com. True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. Hi, I'm Brian with the HVAC School Podcast and HVACRschool.com. I'm making this video today in conjunction with TrueTechTools.com. And what we're going to be talking about is the 510i handheld wireless manometer. So the first thing that you'll notice about this is it's extremely small. It fits right in the hand very nicely. It's got a nice magnet, but it doesn't have a readout because it connects to your smart device, your smartphone, or your iPad, or whatever the case may be, using Bluetooth. And what's nice about this is it gives you the ability to do all the normal things that you do with a manometer, read gas pressure, test pressure switches, read static pressure. But in addition to that, you can actually use this to read airflow. And it has a lot of pretty smart software in the app that allows you to do this more easily than traditionally would be the case. And so today we're going to be using a pitot tube. This is a pitot tube. This is not a static pressure tip. A static pressure tip is not open on the end. If you can see here, we have an opening at the end of this pitot tube. And a static pressure tip doesn't have the L shape. It only has just the end. And the reason is, is that in a static pressure tip, it comes, it, all of the static pressure comes in the sides, there's no tip, and it just comes out the end and you read the static pressure. In the case of a pitot tube, you have a total pressure port, which is the end, and then you have the static pressure, which is read through these little tiny holes on the side. Those are kind of hard to see, it's very small. And what happens is, is that by connecting the total pressure port to the positive side of your manometer and connecting the static pressure side to the negative side, this is a differential manometer. What it does is it takes the differential between the two and calculates your velocity pressure. So what's coming in the tip is not just velocity pressure. It has to be, it has to have the static pressure subtracted off because static pressure is also affecting the tip. So when you insert this into the duct and let's say the airflow is coming this way, what's coming in this tip is going to be velocity plus static pressure. What's come, what's affecting these little holes on the sides are just going to be static pressure. So by subtracting the static pressure from the total pressure, we get the velocity pressure. Now the challenge in making these types of readings is that we're tempted to take this reading just at one point. You know, take this, insert it into the duct, take a reading. Well, velocity varies significantly based on where you take the reading in the duct. So if you take it on the sides or in the middle, it's going to significantly change and it will give you wildly different readings. So the only way to do this properly is what's called a duct traverse. And in a duct traverse, you have two options. Either you read at various points throughout the duct and you do the math, you average it all out, or you do what's called a timed average traverse. And that timed average means that you use software in most cases, and that's what we're gonna do today. And it actually is measuring the entire time as you're pulling the pitot tube out of the duct or as you're moving it through the duct, and then it makes the calculation. Now. The most important thing when you're doing a traverse is you have to actually lay out the duct properly. And on a rectangular duct, you take it on five different traverse points in most cases. And I'll share how to do that um, in a link. But what I'm going to be doing today is just a round duct. In, in my home, I actually have some spiral duct work. When I, when I built the house, I, I always wanted to have spiral. So I have a couple sections of exposed spiral, which make it easy to demonstrate this, especially since I only have a 12 inch pitot tube. So I can't use a duct with a diameter of over 12 inches because when you do the traverse, you have to traverse the entire depth of that duct when you do the timed average traverse. So that's what we're going to do. There's a couple things I need to tell you specifically about the measurements that I'm taking today. I'm using a short pitot tube, which is easy to handle and easy to demonstrate on a video. But again, generally speaking, a 12 inch pitot tube is not a really practical tool. It's not something you're generally going to use a lot because pitot tubes are generally designed for higher velocity pressure. So if you have a commercial environment with high duct velocity, a pitot tube is a nice, accurate way of doing that. I'm reading this in a residential application in an eight inch spiral duct, not generally what you would use a pitot tube for. You would generally probably choose an anemometer of some sort, um, hot wire thermal anemometer or a vein anemometer, induct vein anemometer to do this, but I'm demonstrating this tool. So I'm going to show you how to do the time traverse. Also, a lot of people will take a pitot tube and they'll insert it halfway into the duct. So right in the center of the duct, it'll take a single reading and they'll multiply it times 0.9. A lot of people swear by that. 
way of doing it. And it's not a bad way of doing it if you have a really small duct. But it's still not quite as accurate because you're not getting the full range of the duct and, and taking into account any changes from the velocity of the sides to the center. So we're not going to do that. You can do that actually with the Testo Smart Probes app. It allows you to take a single point reading and it will give you a readout. Um, but, but that's not really what we're here to demonstrate today. The other thing to mention is that the way that, um, the way that Dwyer recommends it is that you have eight and a half diameters past. So eight, so if you take the duct diameter, multiply that times eight and a half times, you measure that past any transitions or changes in the duct. I do have a reducing transition that's a little less than 68 inches. So it's an eight inch duct times eight, 8.5. So it's, it's not, I'm not exactly what they're looking for, but I did keep it as far away from the transition as I could, as I could get. Um, with, based on the way that it's laid out. So anyway, I'm just letting you kind of know the reasons why the readings that I'm going to take aren't going to be exactly within specification, but we'll still be able to accurately demonstrate how to use it. But before we do anything else, I want to first show you how to connect up the pitot tube to the manometer. So I've got some long hoses. It's good to have decent length hoses to work with. You don't want, you know, just a couple inches long. In this case, these are about, I would say five feet long, right in that range. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect these. This is actually a 5 16 um, pitot tube. So I have different hose sizes, um, but it really doesn't matter. You obviously have to use the proper hose size for your, um, for your pitot tube that you have, and then you have to adapt it down to the smaller hose size for the actual manometer. But the manometer comes with the smaller hose size. And in most cases, when you buy your pitot tube, that's usually going to come with a larger size. So anyway, this is a 5 16 And so I'm going to connect one to the back here. This is the total pressure. And then this is the static pressure here. So we have static pressure, total pressure. So now I just take the total pressure this end here, and I connect this to the positive side, which is this port right here. It's imprinted here on the top. It's just a little hard to see in the video. So this is positive and this is negative. So total pressure is going to positive like that. I was tempted to say like so, but we're not doing that here. This isn't a cooking show. And then the negative side here. So now we've got both of them connected. You can actually see here, they're, they're really pretty snug. I mean, they're, they're just, they're just press fit on, but they're really not going anywhere. I mean, if this, I could hang this by the hoses and it would be okay. Not that I would do that, but if it falls off the duct with the magnet, it's okay if it, if it hangs. And then it's connected here. Now it's time to do our traverse. So first, I'm going to set down the AC system and get it, get it running up to as high of output volume as I possibly can. Uh, one thing to note is that anytime you're doing a duct traverse, or really almost any measurement, the, the resolution of the gauge tends to increase as the volume increases. So when you're taking a very, very fine reading with less volume, the resolution isn't going to tend to be as good. In this particular case, since we're reading in a small 8-inch duct, I'm going to take the readings a couple times and just see what I get after, after a couple tries. All right, so this is the duct that I'm going to be taking a reading on, and it's eight inches. Generally speaking, you want to be as far away from a, a transition point as possible. Uh, in this particular place, we're, we're pushing it a little bit, so there will be a little turbulence in the duct, but I, I just chose a point equidistant between the transition and the outlet. So I've already gone ahead and made my holes which in a round duct is significantly easier than doing a, a, a duct traverse on a rectangular duct because we only have to make two holes. We just make one on each axis. So I'm gonna go through here and then through here, average the two and see what we get. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and open the, the Testo Smart Probes app. And right now you can see that it's not on, so neither of these are on. But I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on and then it will, it will search and then it will find and, and uh, connect. Okay, so you can see that we're at 0 0.04 inches of water column right now. But in order to make it even better, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to zero out the pressure sensor. All right, so now we're completely zeroed out. Now, before you do that, obviously, you want to make sure that you're in ambient. You want to make sure none of your hoses are kinked or anything. But I've already done that, so now we're at 0 0.00 inches of water column. And now we're going to switch the mode away from basic view, which just shows the the basic readings of the sensor to volume flow duct. 
and we need to go and we need to check the diameter here. So we can figure measurement, go in and set the diameter, which I've already done. You can set rectangular or round. You can set multi-point, single, or timed average, and we're going to do timed average. We're going to uh, do the default density calculation. If I wanted to adjust in for uh, for temperature, for relative humidity, or for barometric pressure, I could go in and set in specific density by setting in temperature and ambient pressure. So we're at supply air, eight inch round, timed average. Okay. All right, so now I'm ready to go ahead and take my reading. Now, when I start taking my reading, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit this play button right here. And that play button will start the timer. Actually, I'll do it right now just so you can see. It will start the timer and the timer will run for as long as it takes me to do the traverse. And then when I'm done with my first reading, I'll hit pause and then I'll go through and attempt to do it at the exact same pace so that that way, let's say it took nine seconds for the first traverse, and I want the second one to also take nine seconds. And then when I'm all done, then I hit the stop button. I'm going to hit stop here. I'm going to go and do a new reading. If you continue, the current measurement will be discarded. I want it to because I didn't read anything. There we go. So now we're ready. So we're reading at zero right now. I'm going to take the pitot tube. And remember, this is total pressure. This is static. So these are, these are the static port. This is the static port, total pressure, and then total pressure coming in the end. So we're going to go ahead now and stick this up on top again. And the main thing to remember is before you start measuring, it's not the main thing, but one of the main things to remember, before you start measuring, you got to send it all the way to the end, then hit the play button, and then slowly but steadily pull it out. Okay, that took me 13 seconds for that one, so we're going to try to replicate the same, and you'll notice again that I'm, that I'm really just focused on keeping this as level as I possibly can and going out as steadily as I possibly can. I'm also wanting to make sure this, this hose likes to kink on me a little bit here, so I'm just liking to make sure that it stays open because it's important that it stays open. So there we go. We're nice and even. Now I'm going to attempt to do this in 13 seconds. Pause. So it took me, it took me a little more than that. So I have a total of 30 seconds. I didn't quite nail that one. But now I'm going to hit the, I'm going to go ahead and hit the stop button, which will then give me my readout. So it's, it's giving me 236 CFM at 678 feet per minute. Okay, so. Tube in. Glad as I can keep it. Oop, drop it stuff all over the place. Going to hit play. As glad as I can keep it. At the end. Pause. That time I was at 11 seconds, so it's a little faster. In, play, pause, 24 seconds, didn't quite nail it that time, but let's see what we get. If you look here, reading zero now because we're not in the duct. 
24 seconds. And now I'm gonna hit the stop button here and it calculated slightly lower. You can see the FPM feet per minute was slightly less. We do it one more time, see what we get. All right, and this time we read 174 CFM. So we're all, all generally within the same range. So that's it. This is the Testo 510i digital manometer with Bluetooth. And this is a pitot tube, and you can use it to calculate your airflow. And then once you calculate your CFM, if you did it, say, on the entire system, you could then calculate your enthalpy and come up with your total capacity. So that's it. That's how you use the Testo 510i to calculate velocity pressure and static pressure and CFM using a pitot tube. Again, I want to remind you that a pitot tube is not a static pressure tube. A pitot tube has an open end and it has the L shape connection at the end. That's how you can tell it's a pitot tube. A static pressure uh, tip does not have an open end and it only has the straight adapter. So don't confuse the two, otherwise it's not going to work at all. The other thing to know about the 510i, like I said, is you can use it for regular pressure readings, regular pressure readings in whatever pressure scale that you choose. And I didn't show you the setup of this, but it's fairly simple within the Testo app. You just go in and set up what pressure scale you'd like to read. But in general, as you know, we read water column. And all you need to know is because it is a differential manometer, if you're reading positive, and only positive, you don't want to read differential, then you just connect to the positive side. If you're reading negative and you only want to read negative, like say for example, if you want to read the static pressure on a return side duct and see what just the return side is, or if you want to find uh, an airflow restriction across a return side, then you would just use the negative side. And the same is true if you were reading static pressure on just the supply side, you would do just the positive side. When you connect both, that's when it shows the differential between the two. Hopefully this was helpful. As always, you can go to truetechtools.com to find this particular product, as well as the pitot tubes and many other things. It's also where you can find the link for the duct traverse for rectangular ducts. Because laying out the duct traverse while on a round duct is fairly easy, on a rectangular duct you have to make sure that you get the points in the right places. And so they have a, a great sheet there that shows you how to do that, and there's also some other videos that have been done in the past that do some specifics on how to do a rectangular duct traverse. Thanks for watching. I've been Brian Orr with HVACRschool.com and the HVAC School Podcast, doing this video in conjunction with TrueTechTools.com. Use the offer code GETSCHOOLED at TrueTechTools.com for a great deal on any of your tool purchases.